We get a lot of affirmations about never giving up. No matter the pain you're feeling right now, like eventually your suffering will have to pay off in the riches, right? It's in our ads and baked into the conversations we usually have with people. If you can't overcome the challenges it takes to make it big, somehow that makes you a failure. Isn't that strange? So make sure you grit your teeth and spit on failure's grave unless you want to look incompetent to everyone around you. Slowly but surely, they'll all tell you, it'll all be worth it in the end, trust me. Rise and grind, whatever other platitudes they got, you know, the generic stuff. But you may lay down with sleepless eyes and wonder, is the chance of feeling fulfilled worth the risk of having your soul sucked right out of you while you're grinding day in and day out? Because if you ask me, I'm gonna say no. But at the very least, you can just describe it as a work in progress. All these words are usually well-meaning, and you know, they come from people who want to spread positivity in this really difficult world, but sometimes persistence can lead to its own detriment. Anything and everything can wear on you, especially if the effort you put in doesn't have a good enough payoff, or if the results just aren't showing up right now. The sad fact of the matter is, this also applies to the things you love, because I love video games, I love action games, and I love doing combos, yet an action video game with tons and tons and tons of combos has me kind of bored out of my mind right now even after just 20 hours of playtime with only about 3 hours left until I finish the game. I'm gonna be frank with y'all, I just gave up. I can't do this anymore. I cannot play Tales of Arise for one more second. I threw in the towel and just, you know, went on YouTube and looked up all the cutscenes for the last 45 minutes of the game. So, shout outs to Yik17 Studio for recording all the cutscenes, you the real MVP for saving me hours of my life for an ending that made me feel flattered in Hank Hill's vanilla flavored cake. And that's quite the accomplishment considering my giant movies flailing around as I sully the ground around me with every step I take. If this doesn't inspire you to believe that anything's possible, I don't know what will. You know that feeling. There isn't a shadow of doubt in my mind that you haven't experienced it either. The nagging dread of potentially missing out on having your mind blown out if you just push through a little bit more. That your blood, sweat, and tears are all fertilizing the soil for something great to sprout. Only to have the weight of the ever looming burnout hover just above your head like a rainy day cloud. You're becoming out of breath during your dreadful sprint and hope kicks in as your eyes are met with the finish line on the horizon. If you can just pull yourself up by your bootstraps and ignore the crushing weight of your feelings for just a little bit longer. This is it. You're finally gonna make it. There's no more room for doubt to slow you down. Just a few more steps and glory awaits. When you cross that finish line, you're drenched in confusion. Like. What? You can finally rest as you bask in overcoming your misery, but there's still a nagging feeling pulling against your shirt. Like, was all your misery worth that payoff? Honestly, just tell me, how often have you actually felt a sense of accomplishment from finishing something that made you miserable early on? I'll let you know that, at least for me, nearly 100% of the time that I've been at this exact same crossroads, I've been severely disappointed for my level of grit I've portrayed. The persistence broke me a little on the inside every time I hype myself up only to be met with disappointment. So it is with great pleasure today that I share with you all. I'm actually kind of proud of myself for being able to drop my pride and let you know I just quit something I did not enjoy. I usually finish every game, show, whatever piece of entertainment where I'm moments away from the climax, even at the cost of my own pleasure. Choosing to let go of Tales of Arise despite the massive acclaim I've heard is a new stepping stone for me. I've grown enough to know it's perfectly okay to quit. I don't need to see everything through to the end. I quit and I am damn okay with it. Closure doesn't have to be the end goal with every piece of media, especially for the ones I don't take any pleasure engaging with. Not only did I save 3 plus hours of time by moving on from this game, but I also dropped the anime Tengokyo Daimakyo with only 6 episodes left. I tried my best, I heard all the praise of this show, and it's like a year old now, I think, I don't know, I'm not gonna look this up. I just can't force myself to enjoy something where my attention wanders back to my phone to refresh an app I just closed. So we're this far gone into this pointless video where I can now say, hey, quitting is quite an admirable skill. You should hone it just like any other. I literally saved 6 plus hours of my life to allocate them to something else I value more favorably because I'm not embarrassed to be a quitter. You know what I could have lost if I didn't recover those 6 hours? 
spending time with my friends and supporting our local arcade that happened to open up in the crazy year of 2024. You could also say those six hours were well spent by the river with a different group of friends of mine during this 100 plus degree Fahrenheit summer. Even when it comes to our relationships, maybe the secret to meeting someone to build a good relationship with is being able to acknowledge when to call it quits. So you can save your time and energy to be able to move on to someone who else aligns with what's important to you in this life. It's quite dangerous to slip into the sunk cost fallacy when it comes to our relationships, but that's exactly why it's so important to be able to evaluate when it's time to just move on. It doesn't even mean you have to cut someone out of your life entirely. You can just semi-quit and come to realize certain people are still worth having in your life, but just not as much as before. Even being friends with an ex could be far more worthwhile than cutting them off completely if they still make a valuable friend. Close friends can become acquaintances where you can still care deeply for them even if there isn't really the opportunity or even desire for things to be how they used to be. And that doesn't degrade the feeling of connection you have for them, just that things have changed, people have changed, priorities have shifted. So why not drop the things that make you miserable? Spend some time and reevaluate your priorities so you have room for the stuff that lights up your day now. It's okay to move on from things and people who added to your life before but no longer do so. You can't live in nostalgia. If you're willing to take the next step, that's how you know you're ready to invite others to enjoy your life alongside you. You can't make room for happiness in your life if it's filled with crummy activities that make time move slower than a broken clock. Or keeping people around who don't want to put in the effort to be an active participant in your life. Alrighty, enough gushing over human bonding and all that mushy gushy stuff, so now we can get back to the talk about what champions are made of. Because quitting doesn't build champions, or at least that's what people would try to convince you of. See, this entire time I've been trying to argue with you the opposite. Quitting is for winners, or uh, uh, losers? Uh, I don't know, something like that. If you couldn't tell, I'm kind of stupid. I mean, I'm sure you could, because you know, you're like Einstein level crazy genius, I'm sure. Everyone on the internet is, but not me, of course. I'm the dumb one always. Despite all the platitudes I'm giving to quitting, it is a bit of a luxury if I do say so myself. But you don't have to take my word for it. All I can ever ask is for you to keep your mind open enough to listen to some opinions I feel like sharing, whether or not they're right or wrong. The sad part is, in certain aspects of our lives, it doesn't even feel like we have the option to quit. I don't know. I'm in a job that hasn't raised my wage alongside the rising cost of living. There's been some restructuring that doesn't feel like it's for the best, alongside giving us more responsibilities to take care of. The sad part is, most other jobs I'm qualified for are paying less than what I make now per hour. While I technically could quit, it sure doesn't feel like it if it means I'll possibly be poorer than usual if I do. So, that's my argument that sometimes quitting is simply a bad option even if you want to. And yes, this is me high key saying I want to leave my job for something else. If y'all find me, oops, but you know, no one watches me, so I'm safe in my little troll's den. For the sake of my sanity, I'd love to quit something that's considered productive, but that is a luxury I cannot afford. I do have a slight side hustle involving video games that earns me a few extra bucks on the side. And no, of course not, it's not YouTube, I only have like 100 subscribers, and I probably won't ever get past the 3 digit mark, but you know. But the dream would be if the main job wasn't such a drain that it doesn't make me want to drop out of society and become a monk when I get out of bed. I just want some balance that includes more rest and time for my creative and nurturing side, you know. There is another form of quitting, and that's quitting life. And I don't mean a nomadic lifestyle kind. I'm sure we can agree on some level that we'd be a lot happier with a simpler life to a certain degree, and that amount will vary from person to person. I've been down that road before several times in my life, and although I've persevered past that fixation to be wiped from existence, I can't say I'm any more interested in that rat race than before. Honestly, I think it's a little healthy to want to be disengaged from the hustle and bustle of everyday capitalism. We didn't really consent to being born into it, while we may not be able to quit that entirely, we can take a little vacation in nature or just some intimate space one-on-one -on -one with someone we love. Unless your life situation is just that bad that you can't even take a moment for yourself, then honestly, I'm sorry. But the desire to give up on life itself. That is one where I wish the answer to quit is never appropriate, but I can acknowledge that no individual deserves to be forced into that situation. 
It's not a headspace anyone would actively choose to live in, with the unfortunate circumstances some people do find themselves in, and with how uncaring society can be oftentimes. I wouldn't blame anyone who saw this as a legitimate option. I have met people and talked to them when they were at this low point in their life. It's never a comfortable conversation to have, but for me personally, it's one I'm willing to engage in. I wouldn't be able to tell you why, as frightening as it can be, I instinctually just cannot seem to back away from them. I just hope that through some miracle everyone is able to catch a lucky break through it like it was for me. And to be honest, I didn't get out of that ideation through sheer willpower like a great advertisement may try to grab your attention with. I just have the boring, unmarketable answer of, my life just kind of fell together by itself, by complete accident, and now things are just a whole lot better. This is a question that's way above my pay grade that I don't feel like I could ever do justice, so let's just conclude this video before I'm too off rails in the feelers. The revival of this channel was supposed to be a brief summer project. I mostly wanted to share some games that made me excited to wake up and play the next day, sharing wholesome vibes with people tired of the constant negative energy spewed across YouTube, especially in the gaming space. I can't help but see all the negative, sensational topics about how it's the end of good, fun video games and get a little disheartened by them. Cause for me at least, I love games more than ever. I love modern games, I love old games, and I'm very picky with the games I choose to play. And if they suck early on, guess what? I'm just gonna hop onto whatever's next on my ginormous backlog. And now with these little video diaries, because let's be honest, these are definitely not refined enough to be called essays. I guess it's going beyond the point of me just talking about video games. This channel wasn't supposed to last after the Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth video, but here we are. I'm not even making content on every game I play, just the ones I feel like talking about. I even made a list of some games and topics I'd eventually like to cover. So here's to me yapping on the internet. You're listening to a weird guy who talks with no particular concrete goal in mind. What even is the point of this channel because to be honest, I have no clue. I just know I'm having fun making these. So for this obscure corner of the internet, I have no desire to quit just yet. My name's Johnny and thanks for spending time with me. Bye.